Greetings, dear listeners, and welcome to The Blackest Sheep, where we delve into the dark corners of history and examine the chilling, the mysterious, and the downright bizarre. Today, we embark on an exploration of three macabre topics, each one stranger and more disturbing than the last. We plunge back into time, deep into the gloom of the Dark Ages, a period steeped in fear, superstition, and the unknown. A time when the world was a vast, uncharted landscape, shrouded in mystery, where the flicker of candlelight was often the only defence against the encompassing darkness. It was an epoch marked by a profound absence of scientific understanding. The mysteries of the natural world were often ascribed to unseen forces and malevolent spirits. The rustling of leaves was not just the wind, but whispers of the mischievous fae. The howling of wolves was not a call to the pack, but the haunting echoes of spectral beasts. In this time of shadows, society was bound by a rigid structure. The masses were ruled by both the iron fist of the monarch and the divine word of the church. The church in particular wielded an immense influence. It was the beacon in the darkness, the arbiter of morality and the interpreter of the divine. Yet this beacon was not without its shadows. The church, in its quest to shepherd the faithful, often instilled a deep-seated fear of the unknown, the different, the unexplainable. The world was a battleground of good and evil, and anything that did not align with the church's doctrine was branded as heresy. This fear of heresy led to the creation of a system designed to root out and punish those who dared to defy the will of the church. It was a system that was as much about control as it was about faith. A system that used fear as a tool and pain as a language. In this era of unenlightenment, the means of extracting truth were as dark as the age itself. The echo of the Iron Maiden's creaking hinges. The chilling whisper of the oubliette's depths. These were the symphony of the Dark Ages. A melody of fear and dread that still haunts the annals of history. In these dire times, the pursuit of truth was often a painful ordeal. The Dark Ages, a period shrouded in mystery and fear, were marked by a relentless quest for truth, a truth often wrenched from unwilling lips through the harrowing practice of pressing for confessions. The very rationale behind this practice was as unsettling as the era itself. The belief was that guilt, like a stubborn stain, could be squeezed out through duress. This led to the development of a chilling arsenal of tools and methods, each designed to apply pressure, both physical and psychological, to the accused. Now, imagine yourself accused of a crime, perhaps witchcraft or heresy. You are hauled into a dim, damp chamber, the air heavy with dread and anticipation. The Inquisitor, a figure of authority and fear, begins his relentless interrogation. Your every word, every silence, every gasp is scrutinized, dissected and twisted to fit a narrative of guilt. This is not a quest for justice, but a macabre dance of power and fear. The physical torture was equally horrifying. The rack, the thumbscrews, the strapado, these were not just instruments of pain, but props in a nightmarish theatre of confession. Your body, pushed to its limits, would scream in agony, while your mind, confronted with the reality of unending torment, would teeter on the brink of sanity. Yet the most insidious aspect was perhaps the psychological torment. The fear of the unknown, the dread of what was to come, the despair of ever escaping this torment. These were the invisible shackles that bound the accused. The interrogators capitalized on this fear, using it as a weapon as powerful as any physical torture device. And so, the pursuit of truth during the Dark Ages was not just a process, but a spectacle, a grim tableau of human suffering and desperation. The pursuit of truth, it seems, was a road paved with suffering and desperation. Yet the darkness of the age bore even deeper horrors. Delve with me now into a chilling invention of human cruelty, the oubliette. The word itself, derived from the French oublier, meaning to forget, paints a stark picture of its purpose. An oubliette was not merely a dungeon, it was a place of oblivion, a pit of despair where unfortunate souls were cast into darkness and, as the name implies, forgotten. Imagine a deep, narrow pit, often with smooth, sheer walls that defy climbing. The only entrance, a trapdoor at the very top. 
would be the last glimpse of light for those condemned to this fate. Once that door slammed shut, the occupant was left in absolute darkness, with only the distant echoes of the world above for company. The design of the oubliette was simple yet diabolically effective. Its narrow confines crushed hope and the human spirit. Its depth swallowed screams for mercy. The only sustenance, scraps of food and water, were lowered from above. The victim was reduced to a pitiful existence, living in their own filth, with death often a long-awaited release. The fear of the oubliette was a tool of control. Its mere existence, whispered in hushed tones, was enough to quell rebellion, to silence dissent. It was the ultimate punishment, not just the pain of the body, but the torturous erosion of sanity. Now consider the cruel irony of the oubliette. It was a place to forget. Yet those who experienced its horrors would never forget. Each passing moment would etch itself into their mind, a constant reminder of their fate. They would be forgotten by the world, but they would never forget the world. In the heart of darkness, the forgotten were left to languish in the depths of despair. The oubliette stands as a testament to the depths of human cruelty, a grim reminder of a time when fear and pain were tools of power, wielded without remorse. The age's cruel ingenuity reached its zenith in the creation of the Iron Maiden. This device, a hollow figure of a woman, was a chilling embodiment of the era's macabre fascination with pain and death. Its exterior, often ornately decorated, belied the true horror within. Upon opening the maiden's doors, one would be greeted by the sight of sharp spikes, perfectly positioned to pierce the body, yet miss the vital organs. A cruel design indeed intended not for swift execution, but prolonged torment. The Iron Maiden wasn't just a tool of physical torture, it was an instrument of psychological warfare. Its imposing presence was enough to strike fear into the hearts of citizens, a constant reminder of the gruesome fate that awaited those who dared to defy the status quo. The Maiden wasn't hidden away in the depths of a dungeon, but often placed in public squares or courtyards, its ominous silhouette dominating the landscape. The victim, once enclosed within the Maiden's arms, would be trapped in a world of darkness. Each movement, each desperate attempt to escape, would only bring more pain as the spikes dug deeper. Death, when it finally came, was a release from the unbearable agony. But it was not a swift or merciful end. The Iron Maiden was designed to make death a slow, torturous process, each second a stark reminder of the cruel punishment meted out by those in power. The Iron Maiden was more than just a device of torture and execution. It was a symbol of the era, a testament to the lengths humans could go in their quest for control and domination. Our journey was not for the faint-hearted, but for those who find a thrill in the shadows, in the macabre, in the stories that others dare not tell. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the shadows. Remember to like, subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss future horrors. Until next time, this is The Blackest Sheep. Signing off.